We're here in New Zealand with Phil Clark from Traction, Superwinch and EFS, the local representative doing it hard down here. Phil, hubs, four-wheel drive hubs, what are they and how do they work? Well, Simon essentially is a device that locks the front axle to the vehicle wheel, essentially, thereby allowing you to have drive on your front wheels. And I guess that essentially is what a four-wheel drive is. It's allowing all four wheels of the vehicle to drive at one time. Some vehicles have auto hubs and manual hubs. What does that mean? An automatic hub essentially can be engaged from inside the vehicle normally. Manual hub, essentially, you'll have to get out of the vehicle. There'll be a dial in the wheel area where your hub is. Turn the dial, lock it in, and that gives you a manually locked-in hub system. So, Phil, when somebody's operating their freewheeling hubs on the front, of the vehicle, should they be stiff or should they be loose? It shouldn't be loose, but it shouldn't be stiff either. It should be just smooth. And as long as you know how far your actuation is, you'll be fine. You won't have a problem. You'll know that your hub's locked in. Now, you won't necessarily feel a click, but if you're aware of the hub that you own, you'll know that it's either half turn, like a sleep punch hub, for instance, or a full turn for perhaps a worn hub. And a half turn is generally more convenient and a lot quicker than a full turn? Most definitely a half turn is definitely more convenient. So what would the indicators be when people are having problems with their hubs? Essentially you'll have no drive normally to the front wheel of the vehicle where the hub's failing, you might hear a clicking noise. Really your first indicator that perhaps you've got a hub failure is you won't go anywhere. Your vehicle will get stuck. It's no longer a four wheel drive. What about oil seepage, Phil? If you're seeing oil seepage, it's not generally a failure of the hub. It might perhaps be an axle seal, oil's getting past, and the hub's not designed to hold oil. It's not designed as an oil canister, so if you have got oil leaking out of your hub, it's probably time to take it off and have a closer look at the rest of your running gear back from the hub. And if it, somebody does have to replace a hub, how hard is it? The hub's relatively easy to replace on most vehicles. With the right set of tools, you could probably do it in about 15 minutes. I believe there's one special tool that most people need? Yeah, you probably need a set of circlip pliers, perhaps a set of allen keys would be useful as well for most hub types as the top half of the hub is held on with an allen bolt. And Phil, what are the main factors that cause hubs to break? can be a couple of reasons, obviously a, a complete hub fracture or a smashed hub can be caused by a vehicle that's lifted its front wheels off the ground under power and then they've slammed back down causing a shock load through the hub, that'll either destroy perhaps a hub or in some cases your CV joints. Automatic hubs, while most OEM manufacturers are bringing out auto hubs on their vehicles, they do have a couple of drawback. Automatic hubs are not as strong as a manual locking hub generally. Areas that you'll find an issue are under compression braking. That's probably the most common time you'll find a failure in a hub. Another sort of area of weakness, if you like, is essentially they're not designed to work in reverse. Now, that's great if you're on the open road or going across a paddock, but not particularly good if you're wanting to, uh, if you have a failed ascent or a failed hill climb and you're wanting to get back down in a safe manner in four-wheel drive, not very useful there. Now, Phil, in your opinion, are aftermarket hubs stronger than original equipment? There's simply no doubt the whole aftermarket manual hub market actually relies on the fact that OEM hubs are weak. There's just simply no doubt that they're a stronger alternative. And if people are looking for an aftermarket hub, what sort of quality things should they be considering? Things like ease of use are always going to be important, so perhaps you could be looking at a hub with a half-turn uh, actuation. Warranty is always important. There are a few, shall we say, sort of grey importers out there importing product of dubious nature. Probably good to have a chat to your local 4x4 clubs, see what the guys are using. Just make sure it's a nice, reputable brand. Go for something with a good name. Definitely. Phil Clark from Superwinch, Traction, EFS, and a whole range of other things. Thank you very much for your valued opinion. Thanks, Simon. Get your hat